This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. Welcome, family, to another wonderful edutainment edition of The Art of Mistakes. Today's show, I'll talk about the Otis Bird hanging, lynching, suicide, whatever you want to call it, that happened in the Mississippi uh, last March. His body was discovered after being missing for several days. Uh, Otis Bird, uh, who was 54 years old, he did about 25 years in prison for murdering a woman, a white woman named Lucille Trim, who owned a uh, store, a country store, a country grocery store, I believe. Uh, for $101 uh, of all things. He spent like 25 years in jail, was paroled in 2006. Uh, by all accounts, he did not get in trouble, kept to himself. Uh, allegedly, he was dropped out at a casino on March 2nd. Allegedly, he was dropped out at a casino on March the 2nd and was not seen and was reported missing on March the 8th. And his body was found a couple weeks later near his home. And this is a couple questions I want to ask, or somebody need to answer for me if they can. It's a couple of things because I actually have done investigating into uh, a, a hanging case in Mississippi several years ago. It concerned a young black man named. It concerned a young black man named Frederick Germain Carter, who was found hanging from a tree in um, Greenwood, Mississippi, in LaFleur County, back in December of 2010. And his case was ruled a suicide, although he was found in a majority white neighborhood. And the coroner said that he was dead for at least, I believe, 24 to 48 hours. But people who would normally walk back there, there's a dog kennel back there as well, so people would normally walk that area in that uh in the woods which is near a white neighborhood they didn't see anybody hanging from the tree that morning his body was not discovered hanging until that noon uh around noon time around 12 o'clock 12 30 so that's very strange and they said that was a suicide although he was missing for about uh, i believe two days he was reported missing but i got all that you know you go to a youtube channel and check out some of the Stuff I did with Frederick Man Carter, I interviewed the uh, county sheriff, the DA, uh, the county coroner, his family, and uh, other people as well who were involved in the investigation of that uh, tragic case. And I still don't believe to this day that it was a suicide because, I mean, it just don't make any sense. But even with Otis Bird, you know, they say they found him hanging uh, from his from a tree near his home, excuse me. He was hanging with a bed sheet around his neck from a tree badly decomposed. And I, I and I asked this, I mean, how come nobody was able to spot that body hanging behind his home? I mean, why did the family, my thing is thinking that's common sense. I don't know what happened with the family or friends. I'll be searching the property as well. It's like his body would have came up before it came up, you know, later in the month. It's like would have came up earlier if he was just hanging from that tree in the back of his home and also uh there's a couple of things now he went to to uh jail for capital murder he was convicted of capital murder he killed a white woman named lucille tram who owned a a country grocery store now what's interesting is that this is mississippi and for him to kill a white woman and get out of jail almost 30 years later is kind of interesting because it's mississippi because normally if you if you are a uh, person in a capital trial in Mississippi and they find you you guilty, you probably will stay in jail for life or probably get on death row. There's a case of a guy named Curtis Flowers who had six trials on the same evidence. It was a capital murder trial. You know they say he killed four people at his former employer's place back in the late nineties, but there's no evidence connecting him to the scene of crime. Everything is circumstantial. They used the same evidence. They had the six trials in different locations throughout Mississippi. 
you know, the, the trial, you know, the verdicts have been overturned several times why they had so many retrials. So this guy's on death row, uh, basically with no evidence connecting him to the scene of the crime. And yet, you know, they proved that this guy killed this white lady and he was able to get out of prison in Mississippi 25 years later. Now, what is interesting, I want to point out, is the fact that this lady has a daughter who lives in Virginia, a retired Air Force, and we get it right. I believe she actually ran for Congress as a Republican candidate in Virginia back in 2006, the same year they let out Brother Otis Byrd. Let me get it right. It's good to have our internet and smartphones. And let me get her name right here. Yes, retired Air Force Major General Martha Ranville. That was her mother, Lucille Trim, who was killed by Otis Byrd. Martha Ranville, a retired Air Force Major General and 2006 Republican congressional candidate in Vermont. I, I said Virginia, I meant Vermont, the other V state. Rainville is married to Paul McHale, the former Democratic congressman from Pennsylvania. Let me read that part once again so y'all understand. Lucille Trim's daughter, Lucille Trim is of course the victim of Otis Byrd, is Martha Rainville, a retired Air Force Major General and 2006 Republican congressional candidate in Vermont. 2006, the same year that uh, Otis Byrd was paroled. Rainville is married to Paul McHale, the former Democratic congressman from Pennsylvania. This is her Air Force, all that stuff. Well, you know. And what does that mean? I don't know what it means. But information is power. It's good to know things like this. To me, it means that, well, we know she's well connected. Lucille Trim was not just anybody or nobody. She was somebody who had a family that was accomplished. They had a lot of political connections. You know, there's something to think about. And that's all I'm saying. You know, uh, let's think about certain things. Let's think outside of what we think we know and use our imagination more to discover things we need to know. So, with the oldest bird thing, um, it is funny to me all these black men being killed or found hanging in trees are uh, all suicides. Like in Mississippi, I, they have yet to prove that a black man did not hang himself. Uh, since Emmett Till, it's like since Emmett Till, that all the black folks that have been finding hanging from trees in Mississippi have been suicides. You know, uh, the only time, you know, it's just, it's just fascinating to me. Something to think about. You know, uh, Mississippi at one point was having a lot of hanging deaths in the jail cells. Uh, that was recently, that was back in the 80s. They had a whole bunch of black men found hanging in their jail cells. Then you also got uh, Raynard Johnson and a couple other people. You got, like I said, Frederick Jermaine Carter. There's so many brothers been found hanging in trees in Mississippi and they all been ruled suicides. You got brothers, like the brother who was a, uh, a top football prospect in Mississippi who was killed at a traffic stop with his own shotgun, supposedly. You know, and people, my thing is this is black folks. A lot of this stuff we gotta think about. Why does this stuff keep on happening to us as a people? Why do these things keep on occurring? Why are the lessons that we are missing in these things? Well, what out? Why are we failing to learn? You know, people always use that uh, that biblical passage. A lot of black folks I know, very religious, good people. They always say, you know, uh, the last will be first. And the first will be last. But what if you are the first people on the planet? Why are you the original people? You know, we was first at one time. When we were kings and queens and stuff like that. And now we're paying the price for being first. You ever thought about that? You know, anybody ever think about that? You know, some food for thought. But concerning the oldest bird case. Uh, let's go online and look this stuff up. This is very interesting. I wanted what she questioned at all. Uh, or, or made aware. Uh, when this happened about Otis Bird. I mean, I don't know the history. I don't know. But this is some, some crazy stuff going on. But there's something to think about. I mean, I don't know too many black men that were able to walk, you know, out of Mississippi a free person after killing a white person. You know, in a you know, convicted in a capital crime, right? You know, killed her for $101. He actually was robbing her to pay off a, a, some type of fine he had of $10, I believe. From a previous crime, that's what they're saying. But also, you, you know, you, you see, it's funny. As soon as they found him hanging from a tree, they had to pull up his criminal past. 
you know, like, you know, he, he doesn't have a right to be thought of or be, uh, people shouldn't feel compassion or empathy for this guy because he, he's a felon. He's an ex-con, you know, uh, they only do that with black people, I see, you know, uh, I don't know anybody living today that have not committed a sin, you know, if they say we are born into sin, how can you be innocent of anything? Surely we all are guilty of something. That's what I'm saying. So the way this man died was not right. Uh, it's unfortunate that, you know, black folks, we keep on dying and we keep on not realizing that we really need to start making demands, that we really need to start organizing among ourselves. We really need to start controlling the narrative of our stories and getting the word out what's going on with our people. Because right now, we are in a war. A, a war over ideas, uh, ideology, a war over culture, a war of just being, a war over your existence. So with that said, family, uh, I want to thank you all for listening. If you like what you heard, feel free to subscribe. Donate to We All Be, because we're going to take it to the next level. Um, tell your friends. Contribute your thoughts in the comment section below. And also, make sure you check out uh, the work I did on the Frederick Jermaine Carter case. And you'll see why I'm so concerned about this stuff. But also, I realize the games, the games, the games. So in the words of the great Duke Elton, we love you madly. Keep on producing and pushing. And keep on thinking.